So, we just remind ourselves, we've got a situation where we've got lots of sodium outside and some potassium and comparatively just got a few potassiums inside here or, or, or a majority of potassiums here but because some of the potassiums out there there's more positive out here than in here and therefore we've got this resting potential of inside the cell minus 70 compared to outside the cell good now what happens during an action potential so what causes the resting potential to become action potential it all begins when when the stimulus so let's assume that whatever's happened here and remember the events of the synapse are happening here which we'll look at in a bit but because of the events of the synapse sodium this cell has begun to depolarize so if we call the resting potential a state of polarization when sodium when these um, ligand-gated sodium channels are opened at this end of the neuron, sodium is coming in. When sodium comes in here, we start to get more positive ions coming inside, causing the negative inside to become more positive, and so depolarization is starting to happen inside the cell, because we're getting more sodium. Now, when the sodium starts to come in to the cell, and at this point we only call it depolarization, not an action potential. When the cell starts to depolarize, it opens the voltage-gated sodium channels. These channels are usually closed at resting potential, but the changes in voltage, these channels are sensitive to changes in voltage. And when they experience that sodium is starting to come in here, then these gates start to open. So, a little bit of depolarization causes the voltage-gated sodium channels to open. Now remember, out here we've got loads of sodium, in here hardly any. And also it's a bit more negative in here than out here, which is going to attract these positive ions. So sodium then, when these voltage-gated sodium channels open, so depolarization causes the voltage-gated sodium channels to open, when they open, the sodium, even more sodium enters the cell, so a little bit of depolarization causes even more depolarization. And once you hit a certain threshold level of depolarization, you open enough of these sodium channels to get an action potential, which is around plus 40 millivolts. Okay? So a little bit of depolarization, a little bit of sodium coming in. So when this axon becomes a bit stimulated and a bit of sodium has come in, that little bit of sodium, that little bit of depolarization opens the voltage-gated sodium channels. The sodium from the outside of the cell, even more of it comes in. It causes even more depolarization. More depolarization causes more voltage-gated sodium channels to open until as much sodium um, as the electrochemical gradients will allow enters the cell and you know we'll assume that that as much sodium that can enter the cell is at plus 40 millivolts that's the maximum that you can get inside this axon okay and so this is the point at which we have an action potential now we've got an action potential here so that's essentially action potential but the next thing we got to answer or think about is okay well the, the action potential is here but we we said that you know the whole nature of this communication was that you've got a signal or the impulse and the impulse moves along the cell so how is it that this action potential in this part is going to cause an action potential in the next part i.e causing the signal to move down the axon. How is that going to happen? <clears throat> okay, so well that, that's the next thing. First we'll look at what is going to happen next, which is how does this thing go back to normal? So now that, the, now that's so much, um, now that it's so positive inside the cell at plus 40, at this voltage the 
voltage-gated potassium channels open. These are not the same as the leak channels. These are voltage-gated potassium channels which will only open under a certain voltage. When a certain voltage is reached, that's when these potassium channels will open. And that voltage difference, or that voltage or potential difference is plus 40. So when we hit plus 40, then the events to start bringing everything back to normal, they are triggered. So plus 40 causes the voltage-gated potassium channels to open. Now when they open, remember at this point, the inside of the cell is much more positive than the outside. Also, we do have a lot of potassium in here much more than the outside. So at this point, positive ions, namely potassium, start to go back out. Okay, so these are no longer there anymore. Okay, so because they're all inside. But because there's so much sodium and potassium now inside the cell, when these potassium channels open, the potassium moves out of the axon, causing repolarization to begin. Okay, so now, because the positive ions are leaving the cell, the charge or the, you know, the charge inside the cell starts to go back down again, back towards the negative. Eventually, we get a lot of potassium out here and sodium in here, okay? Then, we get so much potassium going out that a little bit overshoots, okay, what it would take to get back to minus 70, and so this we call hyperpolarization. Okay, so going up here, we had depolarization. Depolarization caused the events of the repolarization. The repolarization kind of overshoots and causes hyperpolarization going even more negative than minus 70. But then once we hit hyperpolarization, at this point, the voltage-gated K plus channels close, the voltage-gated sodium channels close, and this point, the sodium potassium pump, I mean, it's, it's always working, but because all the other channels are now closed, its effects are now um, going to be more uh, pronounced. So at this point, then the sodium potassium pump continues to move the K plus into the cell, move the sodium out of the cell, or pump them, and by doing so, it's going to return, allow a return to the resting potential in this place. Okay, so that's happening here. Now, how does the events here cause events in the neighboring area to change? Well, kind of we've already looked at this. The sodium that came in at this point is going to diffuse a little bit down the axon and when it does so it will cause um, the voltage gated sodium channels voltage gated sodium channels in the neighboring region to open causing more sodium to come in in this area causing the events of the action potential to be repeated in the next part of the axon when the sodium comes in in this part of the axon some of it will diffuse uh, down the axon and cause voltage-gated sodium channels in the next part of the axon to open and the action potential will be happening over there. Meanwhile, in this area, everything will start to go back to normal. Okay, so while this area is now in a state of resting, this is just recently, this area might be in a state of repolarization, whereas the next, state, next part of the axon will still be in a state of action potential. So as the action potential moves along, everything behind it starts to return back to normal.